but a done deal. Oklahoma and Texas are out, and the Big 12 future is very much up in the air. I'm Pete Mundo. HeartlandCollegeSports.com is the site. And uh, before we get into this show here, I know many of you are on YouTube right now asking where we've been. And I'll tell you what, uh, I was posting everything on the podcast page. I was not doing a lot of Facebook Live. I was just not doing a lot of it. So I was kind of taking a breather from the video because I'm actually building, it's not a studio, but I'm building a space in the basement to set myself up for the upcoming football season so we can get back to doing more video. And then this happens. And I'm like, I got to get on the video somewhere, somehow. So I'm set up in a side room doing this show for you. We're on Facebook Live. We'll be on YouTube but the best place to catch us and catch this show is on the podcast on iTunes. We just hit 400 ratings on the podcast and iTunes. So all of you that are doing that, a huge thanks. Greatly appreciate it. We're beating CBS, The Athletic, ESPN on Big 12 podcasts and iTunes. So thank you guys for that. It really does make a difference. It takes 30 seconds. And that's why I'll send you a free Heartland College Sports koozie when you send me a screenshot of your rating and review on iTunes to Pete Mundo. M-U-N-D-O at heartlandcollegesports.com. So the Big 12 today, fi- or the Big 12, the Oklahoma Sooners and Texas Longhorns filed to join the SEC. And let's rewind a week, all right? A week ago today was Tuesday. None of this was being talked about. The news from the Houston Chronicle broke on Wednesday afternoon. If you told me a week ago that Oklahoma and Texas in seven days – we're going to go to the SEC. I would have said you were smoking crack and drinking a fifth of vodka at the same time. I wouldn't have believed you. I, there's no way that you could have convinced me a week ago that this conference would have blown up spectacularly like it has. I mean, we're two weeks removed tomorrow from Bob Bowlesby taking the stage at Big 12 Media Days, which feels like a lifetime ago, by the way, and literally saying to the media, Thanks for not asking about conference expansion. He literally said that to us. And we're like, well, there's nothing to talk about. I mean, what do you want us to do? There's nothing to say. That was Bob Bowlesby two weeks ago tomorrow. And here we are, the conference on the brink. Now, here's the thing. Texas and OU, is, they're saying like, oh, yeah, we're going to join July 1 of 2025. Because that's when the media rights deal is up uh, for the Big 12 conference. OU and Texas and ESPN combined and the SEC are going to do everything in their power to blow up the Big 12 before then. Let's be very clear on that. They are going to try to blow up the Big 12 as quickly as they can before July of 2025. OU and Texas have zero intentions of playing football in this conference or anything in this conference through 2025. They're done. All right. They're mentally checked out, I believe. It is funny, too. And listen, we're going to cover OU in Texas for as long as they're in this conference. All right. And what we do, uh, that remains to be seen. But we're not going anywhere. I promise you that we are not going anywhere. All right. We're not going to just shut our doors. We're going to do something. We're going to be a part of something. I, I don't know what yet, but we will. And we're taking all suggestions, by the way. But um, it's funny how OU in Texas despise the SEC. And now I feel like we're going to be getting SEC chance at OU and Texas games after they score a touchdown this year. I don't know. That's just my hunch. That's just my hunch. Uh, But it's interesting that these two conferences are saying all the right things, but they clearly have no intention of staying. Now, what was interesting to me in the last 12 to 24 hours, Jamie Pollard, the Iowa State Athletic Director, came out with a statement. And in that statement, he made it very clear. He's going to make OU in Texas pay. He wants OU in Texas to pay. All right? He made it very clear it's going to cost 70 to 80 million bucks if Texas wants to get out early. And I believe out of spite, you're going to see the other eight teams do everything they can to make OU in Texas pay that 70 to 80 million dollars. Now, you may say it's never going to happen. You may say, uh, fat chance, we're out of here. ESPN, the SEC will make sure it happens. Maybe you're right. Right. Maybe you're right. I don't know for sure. But I will add to the conversation here and say, I believe all the other Big 12 presidents and Big 12 ADs are on the same page on this idea that if these schools want out early, they're going to owe us something. 
because if they want to break the deal early, it's going to cost 70 to $80 million. I don't know how that plays out. Now, if everyone starts scattering, if Iowa State goes to the Big Ten with Kansas, right, which is being talked about, uh, if West Virginia goes to the ACC, if four Big 12 teams head out west, like who, who knows, then it all might be meaningless anyway. But as long as these eight are together, I believe they're going to make and try to make OU and Texas pay serious, serious money to leave this conference early. Now, where are we? What's the latest on conference realignment? So the latest, uh, uh, let's start with that Big Ten. Iowa State and Kansas reportedly made a run at the Big Ten conference, and that's the natural fit. I think it makes way too much sense for Iowa State and Kansas to be in the Big Ten if, if they get an invite. If the Big Ten wants them. See, here's the problem. This is what we're all doing, and this is a problem. We're looking at this through the lens of fans. All right? We're looking at this through the prism of, oh, Iowa State, Iowa, going from a non-conference game to a conference game. That's fun. Iowa State fans getting to go to Nebraska again, to uh, Minnesota, to Wisconsin, to Northwestern. That's fun. Well, guess what? One thing we've learned here. The powers that be don't care about what is good for you as a fan. They don't care about what is convenient, what what rivalries you want. Uh, they don't care about what's a three-hour drive for you to make a long weekend out of. They don't care. And the sooner that we realize, and you realize, and I realize, because we're all guilty of this, the sooner we all realize that the people that are calling the shots here don't care about what is good for us and what is convenient for us and what we want as fans, the quicker we'll realize uh, that we can't look at this through the rational prism of Iowa State joining the Big Ten. Oh, that makes sense. Kansas joining the Big Ten. Oh, that makes sense. No, that's not what's at play here anymore. It's not. It's about what can you do for me revenue-wise? Can you make me more money? All right? And the Big Ten's got to make a splash if they're going to expand. And here's the reality, and I say this with all the love, with all the love, because no, everyone knows, you know, if you watch this show, if you follow this website, you read our stuff, um, we love, I mean, we love all the Big 12 teams, but we are very high in Iowa State as a program from the top down. But when you talk about media markets, when you talk about added value, I mean, the Big Ten's paying out over $40 million a year. Does Iowa State make that number go up? That's the question the Big 12 is asking themselves, right? And if the answer is not an obvious yes, then they may hold off. Then they may wait. They may see what else is out there. Who else is out there? I mean, there's crazy rumors about the Big 10 trying to poach the Pac-12. Like at USC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon. It seems kind of nutty, but I mean, there are so many different things at play right now. We can't look at it through, well, Iowa State, Kansas to the Big Ten. Texas schools go out west. There's way more, way more going on behind the scenes uh, than just simply what makes sense on its face, on its surface, you know. Now, but still, Iowa State and Kansas will be wise to reach out to the Big Ten, and that's a great play for them if they can get in. Then you look down south. Uh, Texas Tech, Baylor, TCU are still apparently looking out west, but Here's the catch. I don't know if you saw this. Big 12 media or Pac-12 media days started today. Pac-12 media days today. And the commissioner, either he's playing hard to get or he's kind of changed his tune a little bit here. So Pac-12 commissioner, new guy, by the way, Greg Klievkoff, he opened up Big 12 media, uh, Pac-12 media days uh, saying, quote, we believe the move by Texas and Oklahoma strengthens our unique position as the only Power Five conference with teams in the Mountain and Pacific time zone. That's what he said. Well, if you're a Big 12 fan and you wanted to see your teams go out west, that's not ideal. That's not what you wanted to hear today. All right? That is not what you wanted to hear from the Pac-12 commissioner. Now, maybe, once again, he's playing hard to get, and he's just like, yeah, I'm just going to say this, and away we go, and that's kind of the extent of it. Maybe that's really all it is. But to go from where we were, a Pac-12 commissioner who said over the weekend he would listen to calls if Big 12 teams called them, to saying, no, I think we're good. I mean, we're happy um, having all our teams in the Mountain and Pacific time zones. 
And he also said, we don't think there's any risk to staying at 12 teams. Those are telling comments from the Pac-12 commissioner. It's like over the weekend, he said he's going to listen to Big 12 calls. And then the ADs and presidents at USC and UCLA and some other places called him up and said, hey, we're not taking scraps, all right? Like, I, I don't think that what people have to realize about the Pac-12, USC and U, UCLA, they want to be good at football. They want their fans to have a good time watching football games. But they're not living, sleeping. They're not, they're not dying by what happens on the football field. They're just not. I know they're blue bloods, especially USC, but it's just not their vibe out there in the Pac-12. So they're going to take a different approach to all this. And any idea that the Pac-12 is going to scoop up the Big 12 is clearly um, just not right. What we're hearing right now is just not right. I'd love to see it happen. You want to see a super conference send eight Big 12 teams out west. you got a 20-team conference there in the Pac-12. And you have the east and the west. I would say you'd add Colorado and Utah to the east or let's say the two Arizona schools, whatever you want to do. And there's your East and your West, and bing, bang, boom, you're done. Colorado faces the old Big 12 teams, and you're, you're good to go. That's my dream scenario. And then we cover the Pac-12, and life is easy. Or Pac-20, I guess it would be. But it is much more complex than that, and we're not going to be having any answers anytime soon on this. I'll tell you what. Uh, we are on Facebook Live. Let's get to some of your questions. Alonzo writes, this is heartbreaking. <laughs> Preaching the choir there, Alonzo. How do you think we feel, my man? I'm with you. This is. And that's the other part of this. I mean, no one cares about the fan anymore. I know I said it earlier, but what's good for the fan, the rivalries, what makes college football great, what makes it to me, the, the rivalries, the pageantry, the history, the fandom passed on through generations on Saturdays, it's done. And we've been trending this way. But unless the Big 12 somehow salvages itself, it's done, especially for those of us that love this conference like we do. Uh, Bill writes, Pete, I believe they're going to be in the SEC in 2022, 2023 at the latest. Boy, I'd say it's 23, but I think we agree, Bill. It's certainly not going to be 2025. Uh, Elijah on Facebook Live, OU in Texas going to the SEC because they need something to cheer about in the postseason. Well, I mean, OU, listen, OU this year is going to have a hell of a team. OU should be playing for a national title this year. I'm not going to take that away from them, all right? Texas, on the other hand, the last 10 years has, like, the fifth best record in the Big 12. So this is not going to go for Texas like they think it's going to go. And once again, we will cover Texas fairly, all right? Like, I'm not holding any of this against Steve Sarkeesian, against B. John Robinson, uh, Casey Thompson, Hudson Card, this this decision is made so much further up the food chain than those guys. So I will still fairly cover them. I think they're all probably great individuals, but I can still and we can still be mad at Texas. All right, because everything they touch seems to, uh, I don't know, get lit on fire, for lack of a better phrase. It's just crazy. Uh, Don writes, I'm more interested in the chance in Big 12 stadiums that are playing OU in Texas. That is going to be interesting, Don. Uh, there might be some sarcastic SEC chance going on there if you're running up the score. And speaking of running up the score, uh, we have a new T-shirt. Find it on our Twitter page, at Heartland underscore CS. I'll put it up on Instagram and then Facebook, too. The, the new shirt that we have says, run up the score with a horns down on the front of the T-shirt. So, Go check it out on our Twitter page. I'll put it up on our Instagram page as well when I'm done here. Pete, why not bring back Houston into the mix? Uh, I would look to expand. I would look to I would look to Cincinnati. I'd look to the Florida schools. I'd look to Houston, SMU. It's not going to be maybe a power five, but it will be better than a group of five. It will be. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? Any chance a Big 12 school demotes to a group of five? The AAC is talking a big game. I don't see any way the AAC gobbles up the Big 12. The AAC pays out about $7 million bucks a team. The Big 12 is paying out uh, $37 million a team. So I don't think that's likely. It seems very, very unlikely that the Big 12 teams would go to the AAC. The Big 12, if anything, should try to poach a couple of the AAC teams and then get a conference that will pay you maybe $15, $20, 25000000 million a year if you can get to that point. That's got to be the play for the Big 12. And it's not a bad one considering 
by the way, there was an offer on the table from the other eight Big 12 teams to possibly lower their monetary threshold and give OU and Texas a higher revenue share. They would give OU and Texas 55, 60 million bucks a year, and then the other teams would have taken $32 million a year. That would have been a smart play, but OU and Texas were already out the door. And you know what? I saw a report, I think it was from The Athletic, that said last week some Big 12 ADs caught wind of this before it broke publicly, and there were insiders at Texas who told these Big 12 officials, "Eh, it's a lot of talk, don't worry, it's not a done deal, this is getting overblown, and here we are. And that's why you can't trust. I'm sorry, but the other Big Big 12 teams, the eight Big 12 teams left, they can't trust OU and Texas anymore. I know it's over, it's done, it's a bad divorce, but they can't trust them anymore, and nor should they. Nor should they. Uh, Texas Tech, TCU, Baylor, Houston, Oklahoma State, SMU, Louisiana Tech, Iowa State, Kansas, and another team could be a future possible conference. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Zach, how many wins for Iowa State this year? I'm going to say 10, Zach. That's my quick number off the top of my head. 10 for Iowa State in 12 regular season games. I'll say 10 and 2 right now. Maybe uh, maybe 11 and 1. Might surprise me, but I think it, they're going to be a hell of a team. Hell of a team. Uh Pete heartbreaking to think Bedlam will likely come to an end. Yeah, I know. I know Bedlam likely will come to an end. And you can't blame Oklahoma State for flipping the bird to OU if OU's like, "Hey, we'll do Bedlam in September as a non-conference." I, no. I mean, if you're Oklahoma State, you flip the bird, you move on, at least for the short term, all right? At least for the short term. And Oklahoma State's the wild card in this. I mean, there's talk about the ACC, the Big Ten, and the Pac-12 if the Big 12 does collapse. But there are good relationships. One thing I want to leave you with here. There are very good relationships in the Big 12 right now for the other eight teams amongst the athletic directors. They know each other. Some of them have worked with each other in some capacity. So they, I believe are going to try to help each other in some capacity, and that should encourage people if you are a fan of one of these other eight teams. So I just want to leave you with that sign of optimism here, all right? And we did write a good piece. It's on the website. Robert Graves wrote it. Um, It's on the homepage right now about why it's likely the other eight teams in the Big 12 could stay together at least for now, at least for now. This idea that in two weeks, you know, the Big 12 is going to be decimated by 2022. I wouldn't quite call it that. Not right now. It, th- there are benefits to them staying put as it currently exists today. Pete Mundo with you. HeartlandCollegeSports.com. Boy, do we have a heck of a lot of content right now up on the site. Please go check it out. All right. Uh, Sean, are the Big 12 refs throwing horns down? <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. Uh, Scott, how many wins for Baylor? Baylor, you know, this may be a surprise team, Baylor, this year. I, I, I would say five. I'd pit them at five wins. Uh, Justin, West Virginia through the ACC, that's the natural fit. But I was hearing some stuff and reading some stuff, and we wrote about this, too, on the website. The ACC's going to want them, and that's not a done deal yet. They've got to figure out what Notre Dame wants to do, and if Notre Dame finally wants to join the ACC, and then the conversation can expand to possibly a team like West Virginia. But that's... Once again, that's a great example. It makes sense for the fan base. you got Virginia Tech, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, Notre Dame, all teams that West Virginia used to play in some capacity. But uh, it doesn't mean it's a done deal because it's not about the fan. It's not. All right? So there you have it. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Facebook Live, YouTube, the podcast. There's going to be a lot on the podcast. We'll try to do some video before the season starts. Like I said, i got a little um, – Mini studio setup I'm taking care of down in the basement. It's not done yet. We just had our second daughter, by the way, about 10 weeks ago. So I got two kids under three, second daughter 10 weeks old. So we've got a lot happening here in the uh, Mundo household. But we will still be giving you guys the best Big 12 content. So check us out. Subscribe on YouTube. Get to the podcast. Click us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and check out the T-shirts that are dropping. It will say, run up the score with a big old horns down. You're going to want it before your team plays Texas. All right? Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Appreciate all you're doing. We are doing a record week for traffic. It's because of you sharing our stuff, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.